Diego Duran lived from 1537 to 1588, was a Dominican friar best known for his authorship of one of the earliest Western books on the history and culture of the Aztecs. The History of the Indies of New Spain, a book that was much criticized in his lifetime for helping the heathen maintain their culture. Friar Diego Duran wrote two books, one a history and the other on the ancient customs in Mexican of the Mexican Indians. The finest account ever written in this field. The finest account ever written in this field. He was a very sick man and his works brought him little renown. You hear that? Little renown. Though a section of them has been printed in the Historia Natural, Natural y Moro, Moral by Father Joseph de Acosta, who received it from Father Juan de, uh, de Tovar, right? But what it says is that the manuscript was sent from Mexico to Spain, probably to the library of Dominican ministry, sometimes between 1581 and 1821. After the secular secularization of the church property of Spain, under Isabel II, the manuscript was deposited in the National Library of Madrid. And then from there, this uh, Mexican historian found it and published it. Okay, After Duran's death in 1588, he was all but forgotten for almost 300 years, one reference. So he was almost forgotten until this historian in like the 60s, I think, 1960-something, had found this manuscript in the Library of Spain and then published it. Also known as the Duran Codex, the history of the Indies of New Spain was completed about 1581. So what I'm going into is what I wanted to share with everyone is um, what I found in his book, all right? which further proves that, you know, the so-called Mexicans and the Native Americans here in the Western Hemisphere are indeed, in fact, the the, the Hebrew Israelites that the, the, the Torah is speaking about, all right? He knew the Bible, all right? And he knew the, the, the Old Testament, so-called Old Testament. He knew the Torah and the laws, and he knew the customs and the pra practices of Hebrew Israelites. This uh, Friday Gerdran came to the conclusion himself. So I'm just gonna read through about five pages, you know what I'm saying? And uh, y'all could uh, ride with me if you wanna learn something. Another, okay, this is a uh, quite this chapter, this is from his book called, this is the book right here. So brother bought me that book and um, I'm gonna share about five pages with you real quick, okay? It's very, it's, this is, this is some, this is some steak here, all right? Some filet mignon, man. Okay, so, uh, you know, break bread and um, take notes. Get this book uh, if you are, in fact, you know, proven who you are, huh? you know what I'm saying? All right, this is uh, from his book, Gods and Rights, on page 23. And it's um, another subject, Trouble Duran. As time passed, he became deeply puzzled by the similarities between personages, rites, and events in the Old Testament and those in the religious life of the Aztecs. See that? Right off the bat. All right? And I'm only on page 23. The thing about our history, Akim, who are the so-called Mexicans, Chicanos of Atzilan, right, are the Native American Indians of North America, Right. All the way down, you know, into, um, you know, Hotec, uh, how do you say all those all those cities down Mexico City, Tenochtitlan. Right. You know, the, the Hondurans, the Guatemalans, this is our history. All you have to do is study our own history. And it's full of this. It's full of it. It's full of information out there connecting you to the Hebrew Israelites that the Torah is speaking about. All right. All right this is out of Friar Diego Duran's own mouth. Another subject troubled Duran as times passed. He became deeply puzzled by similarities between personages, rites, and events in the Old Testament and those in the religious life of the Aztecs. Did you hear that? Personages, people, rites, and events in the Old Testament 
And those, the similarities between the Old Testament and the religious life of the Aztec. He also found parallels between Christianity and the native religion. During vigils in his ministry, ministry with the peaks of the Papocatepetli. You got to forgive my, no, I'm practicing it, Akim, but you ain't going to get it unless you practice it. So it's going to sound pretty bad at first, but we get better with time, right? And the Itztakihuatl, um, visible from his cell, Duran may ha well have wondered about Quetzalcoatl, the generous preacher. All right, listen, this is what he knew about Quetzalcoatl, right? the generous preacher of a gentle way of life, the beloved teacher who had departed across those mountains in his flight towards the east. This is what he knew about Quetzalcoatl. Toward the old world, had not the Lord stated categorically that the apostles were to preach the gospel to all nations? Had the apostles failed to carry out the divine teacher's command, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature? Right, because you have to imagine <clears throat> your zero, right, is when our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shahamashiach was uh, crucified, died, buried, and resurrected from the grave. One thousand four hundred and ninety-two years before. The Spaniards came over and began their conquest. 1,492 years is a long time um, in ethnology, our ethnographics. Um, a lot of things change within a matter of 50 years, if you can imagine that. So you can imagine what it was like in the 60s here in America as opposed to what it is now, it's completely changed, right? Uh, Diego Duran, in his Fray Diego Duran's his life work, and I'm on page 23. Uh, it reads, let's check this out. Uh, another subject troubled Duran. As time passed, he became deeply puzzled by similarities between personages, rites, and events in the Old Testament and those in the religious life of the Aztecs. He also found parallels between Christianity and the native religion. Duran, during vigils in his monastery, with the peak of Popocatepetl, I'm just going to skip out, visible from his cell, during Duran may well have wondered about Quetzalcoatl, the generous preacher of a gentle way of life. The beloved teacher, so he's calling Quetzalcoatl the generous preacher of a gentle way of life. The beloved teacher who had departed across those mountains in his flight towards the east. So what he's saying, Quetzalcoatl departed across the mountains and went back to the east towards the old world. Had not the Lord stated categorically that the apostles were to preach the gospel to all nations? Had the apostles failed to carry out the divine teacher's commands? Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Durant had few persons with him to discuss such questions and few books, but the Bible and Aztec picture writings to instruct him. So he connected the dots ah, right there. He had the Bible and he had Aztec picture writings to instruct him. He saw answers to, to, question, to the questions alone. Both Hebrew and Mexicans believed that in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The old world had its Tower of Babel and New Spain is loft, its lofty pyramids of Cholula. And here's the reference. The pagan priest of Huxi. Tizinko kept an ark containing holy relics. Did you hear that? The pagan priest of Huitzilopochtli kept an ark containing holy relics. Yeah, 
There it is. There's our arc. I think me and brother guys were I love was, was talking about this earlier. All right. So he Diego Duran says he was the similarities between the Aztec culture. Let me read this bottom uh, sentence again. Mexicans, this is from Fire Diego Duran. Mexicans believe that in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The old world had its Tower of Babel and the new Spain, its lofty pyramid is Cholula. The pagan priest of Zinco kept an ark in holy relics, right? All right. Book of Gods and Rites in the Ancient Calendar, page 24. Khan. All right. So we just went from they kept the, the priest. All right. So we the priest kept an ark, right? Treasure held in as much awe as the Ark of the Covenant of the Jews. The culture hero Tapitzin had touched the sea with his rod, and the water had parted, allowing his persecuted people to pass through the gap un, unharmed while their pursuers were drowned. Both Jews and Aztecs had been fed on their pilgrimage by manna from heaven. Did you hear that? This is out of Friday of Duran's mouth. On occasion, when the Aztecs prayed, they lift their eyes feverently to the image of the bird placed on top of a pole. Much as the sons of Israel had worshipped the serpent set upon a pole during their wandering in the wilderness. Some of the food regulations in the Aztec temple reminded Duran of the priestly customs mentioned in Leviticus. Some Old Testament passages and practices even made Duran look upon his Aztec proselytes as descendants of the Jews. Duran said this. Duran said his Aztec proselytes, who he was teaching Catholicism, were this is crazy. The Aztec proselytes, who he was teaching Catholicism, was the chosen the chosen people of God. Ah, like Yasha Allah, man. Were we the children? Ah, it's a beautiful thing. It's like it puts a smile on my face. Ah, like we the people, we them. Ah, you know what I'm saying? Oh, glory on the page of Bashim Al-Shah. Some of the food, all right, this is from Dio Guduran. Some of the foods regulations in the Aztec temple reminded Duran of the priestly customs mentioned in Leviticus. Some Old Testament passages and practices even made Duran, it made Duran look upon his Aztec proselytes as descendants of Jews. There was the traitor Ambimelech of the biblical account who had drunk human blood and act parallel to the bloody sacrifices of the Mexicans and the Indians purified themselves by bathing a ceremony <clears throat> similar to the Jews rite of purification. The Aztecs were subject to strict prohibitions regarding some foods in the Old Testament. Far Diego read the Jews had observed certain dietary prohibitions. Aztecs served the great temple of Mexico carried out offices similar to those described in Deuteronomy. Let me hit that one again. Aztecs served in the great temple of Mexico carried out offices similar to the to those described in Deuteronomy. The ancient Mexicans offered Quail, quail to their deity, sprinkling the altar with the bird's blood in a manner similar to the burnt offerings of turtle doves described in Leviticus. <clears throat> in Mexico, foods were brought to the shrines, just as lambs, calves, and goats were offered in the temple of Jerusalem. Leviticus states that the sacrificial animal of the Hebrews were. All right, in Mexico, foods were brought. This is page uh, 24. In Mexico, foods were brought to the shrine just as lambs, calves, and goats were offered in the temple of Jerusalem. Leviticus state that the sacrificial animal of the Hebrews were to be without blemish. Among the Aztecs, the same unblemished quality was required of human victims. Similar similarities exist between the Indian priest and those described in Deuteronomy. Uh, sacrital sacerdotal sacred sacerdotal functions were inherited from check this out sacerdotal functions were inherited from father to son within certain lineages just like the levitical priesthood right at 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 a low point in the religious history, the chosen people of Jehovah had offered human sacrifices. Do you hear that? A low point at a low point. At a low point in religious history, the chosen people of Jehovah or Yahweh had offered human sacrifices, including their own children to idols and recorded in Psalms 106. And we bring that all the time, right? We bring that out all the time, Psalms 106. 
Psalms 106 and 34, and they did not destroy the nations concerning whom Yahweh commanded them, but were mingled among the heathen and learned their works. And they served their idols, which were a snare unto them. Yea, they sacrificed their sons and their daughters unto devils and shed innocent blood, even the blood of their sons, of, of their daughters and Salakia, the sons, their sons and daughters, whom they sacrificed unto idols of Canaan, and the land was polluted with blood. Thus were they defiled with their own works and went a whoring with their own inventions. Therefore was the wrath of Yahweh kindled against his people insomuch that he abhorred his own inheritance and he gave them into the hand of the heathen and they that hated them ruled over them. Their enemies also oppressed them and they were brought into subjugation under their hand. All glory, all praise, y'all. Hear that? Boom. Okay, as in the case of Moses and his followers, when four men carried the Ark of the Covenant, the chosen people of Hutzilopochtili in their exodus designated four men to carry images of the tribal deity, the supreme God being born with an, being born with an Ark of Rushes. So they were carrying the, the their, their, their version of the supreme God, right? They were carrying it within an arc of rushes. And there's the, the reference. While the Aztec ended their ca calendrical cycle every 52 years, Hebrew law as set forth in Leviticus ordained that after every 49 years cycle, the fifth the fiftieth was to be a jubilee, a Halloween occasion, a year of rest. Salakia. A hallowed occasion, a year of rest. Above all, Hebrews and Aztecs share one striking similarity. Both as chosen people of God had endured rigorous pilgrimages in the wilderness until they had reached their respective promised land, Canaan in the Valley of Mexico. Duran, there's the reference. By the time Duran wrote his two ethnographic works, he believed it possible that the Mexican natives were of Jewish origin. Do you hear that? After he studied it, after he uh, recorded it, after he took notes, after he, you know, did his scientific uh, uh, studies. What did he come to the conclusion? Mexican natives were Jewish of Jewish origin. All right. Mexican natives were of Jewish origin. A few years later, when he wrote his history, particularly, no doubts were left in his mind. Do you see that? He had no doubt that the Mexicans were of Jewish origin. Friar Diego Duran, the Catholic Dominican friar. I think he became a bishop or something later on, you know. I don't know. Then rose the question. All right, here we go. Then rose the question of pre-conquest influences in Mexico. If the apostles had gone forth to preach to all nations, which of the twelve had reached these shores? Had it been St. Thomas, so he was trying to connect the dots, you know, which all logical men do. The apostle associates, so he, he, goes, he says, let's read that again. Then rose the question of pre-conquest influences in Mexico. If the apostles had gone forth to preach to all nations, which of the twelve had reached these shores? Had it been St. Thomas, the apostle associated with India and the Indians? Had the saintly told in Quetzalcoatl been St. Thomas? So he, he's pretty close, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, according to Isaiah chapter 6, Quetzalcoatl was Yahweh Shai, right? Directly after his uh, uh, death, burial, burial, and resurrection. And that's what it says in the intro of, of um, the, the Book of Mormon, right? To Duran, certain details suggest that that conclusion, Topilzin, had performed miracles. He had been honored and revered as holy person. His hair had been long and straight and his beard red, streaked with white. He had spent much of his time praying in praying in cell, where he had lived chastely and performed acts of penance. He had abstained from meat and fasted. He had built altars and shrines and knelt before them. He had been followed by disciples whom he taught to pray and to preach. He had come from foreign parts. He had been persecuted during his stay in Mexico, disappointed with the meager fruits of his preaching. He had departed from the land in the direction of the East Sea. As though 
in confirmation of these stories, one day Fire Diego Duran heard rumors of a mysterious document. Here it is. You got to listen to this, bro. If you're still with me, brother, Yazri Ayala, listen to this. As though in confirmation of these stories, like the Lord gave him confirmation, Yahweh gave him confirmation. One day Fire Diego Duran heard rumors of a mysterious document kept by the Indians of Oquit Udko at the foot of Popocatel. Popocatepetl in the Mar Marquesado, right? Marquesado, that's where, uh, well, that's a whole nother thing. The nat this, this document, we're talking about this document, right? Natives claim that the document had been bequeathed to them by Quetzalcoatl himself when he passed through the village. The painted manuscript was said to be about four fingers thick, covered with characters. Eager to examine the book, the Dominican friar journeyed to Oquituco and begged the Indians to show it to him. The natives, however, swore that they had burned it six years earlier, fearing it would cause them trouble. Duran was also told that the book had been destroyed because the Indians had been unable to read the script, which was different from European writing. Friar Diego was discouraged by the news, feeling that the book might have settled the question troubling him. It could well have been the Holy Gospels in Hebrew. Having scolded those who had destroyed the document, Duran left the village in disappointment. The disappearance of the Hebrew text only served to wit his curiosity wit his curiosity however another trip to the mountains area between the valley of mexico and puebla proved more fruitful there are wise old indians in Cotepec produced a pictorial pictorial manuscript painted in strange characters it portrayed the life of quetzalcoatl and his disciples the natives told duran the story of the holy man friar diego duran was shown a picture of the saint wearing a headdress very much like the um meter worn by christian bishops however when he returned to his monastery and pondered what he had seen and heard had the holy man had the holy man Indeed been St. Thomas, so he's still thinking Quetzalcoatl was St. Thomas, right? Legends were plentiful about a great man who's, who with his rod had opened a path in the sea with his followers. Could Moses have been the protagonist of the epic migration which brought Hebrew culture to the new world? There were other possibilities. A widespread medieval legend recounted how St. Raymond of Pentafor, a 13th century Catalonian sailed from Majorca to Barcelona using his cloak as a vessel. During y'all Catholics know y'all Catholics, uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's for you Catholic brothers. Um, Barcelona using his cloak as during he, he had hear a similar story. Duran had heard a similar story about the great. Quetzalcoatl. One thing seems certain. Someone at some time had to come to the new world and had preached the Bible to the natives. Other parallels had to be considered before conclusion could, could be reached about the origin of Mexicans. The austere lives led by Aztec seminar, seminar, seminarians were reminiscent of the lives of postulant in Christian countries. Any Inclin inclination toward the priesthood was encouraged and given any opportunity to develop. Seminarians passed through a series of grades before attending priesthood. Catholics and Aztec priests had much in common. So the Aztec priests had to work their way up the ranks of the priesthood. Right? They offered incense, offered divine sacrifice in their rites, chanted, did penitence, wore elaborate robes, fasted, made vows of celibacy, lived in com communities, observed holy days, exhorted the people to do penance for their sins, and, wrote, and wore their hair in a, a tonsure. Aztec youth added, the priests in the service of the temple Aztec youth aided the priests in the service of the temple in Mexico, much as the altar boys served in Christian churches. Among the Aztecs, there were uh, cloistered nuns, girls about 12 or 13 years old, who lived chastely. Their only occupation, that of serving the gods, these girls were directly 
directed by older women, much like Christian Ab Abbesis or pr uh, Prioris. Uh, After washing away their sins and fasting, the Aztecs then un offered unleavened bread to Huitzilopochtli. Do you hear that? After washing away their sins, the Aztecs offered unleavened bread to Huitzilopochtli. The oblation consisted of bread of Huajotli, made of Tzitzoli or Amaranath seed. Do the flesh and the bones of God Huitzilo. Check this out. The flesh and the bones of God Huitzilo Pochtili, a ceremonial washing took place before the Tzitzoli, uh, who consecrated and consumed. The consecrated bread was carried to to the sick on certain occasions, like what, like the communion, the holy com so so called like the holy communion, breaking bread, like you know Yahweh said to do, do this in remembrance of me. The sacrificial victims were constantly renewed before the image of Zikatli Poka, much as the host in revered and renewed in the tabernacles of Catholic churches. The flower decorations of the feast of Tetzcatlipoca reminded Fray Diego of the flowery altar set up by Christian churches of the reserving of the host of Monday, Thursday. All right. Uh, counterparts of the Eder Sacramento also existed in Mexico. Penance are confession and a rite similar to baptism, the symbolism and apparel of pre Hispanic heathens and of Europe, European Christians were similar. The cross could be compared to. Kotli, the sacred pole, and the vestments of both priesthood had much in common. The burning of incense was to be compared with the burning of candles. Double feasts were common in both cultures. The Aztec priests rose to pray at the same hour that the monks said, uh, said main, main, matins. Native priests blessed children. The Indians honored relics, much as Catholics uh, venerated the Agnus Dia. The drums of the ancient Mexico and the bells of Christendom had much in the same function. An Aztec Lent compared to the Lent of the Christian countries had undoubt undoubtedly existed. The same could be said about Easter, which would be, what's Easter? Passover, right? He's looking, through, like I said, Diego de Ranz is looking at everything through Catholic lens. But Passover, the same could be said about Passover, in which some ways resembled the holy day of Tlaq. Can you look how dope our people are? Look how, how amazing our people are. That's one word. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen letters in one word. That's how dope we are. Right? Read that. The feast of Tokatl could be compared to the Rogation days. Heathen pleas for the rain was similar to the Catholic Lent Lightenies. Pe Pentecost had parallels to the feast of Tet Pentecost, right? That's that's a whole high holy day. Pentecost had uh the, the Aztec version was Tezcat Lipoca. The Aztec dramatic representation performed in the month of Tocatl often coincided with Corpus Christi. When religious dramas were staged in Spain, people bathed on the feast of Ocpanitli, as Christians did on the day of St. John the Baptist. The natives quickly accepted the practice of offering ears of corn and strings of chili and flowers on the feast of the Nativity of Our Lady of September 8th, remembering the ceremonies of the goddess Chicomecoatli. Uh, which had been held about the same day. The Aztec had celebrated the feast in honor of their dead children and others for deceased adults uh, celebrated similar to All Saints Day and All Souls Day. One day after Christmas, the Aztec celebrated the descent of Hitzilopochtili to earth and indicated his presence by the impression of a child's foot uh, upon a ball of dough. Biblical passages had parallels in the Aztec pantheon. Topilzin could be compared to Hamashiach, St. Thomas. See, there he got it right on that one. Quetzalcoatl was Hamashiach, right? And even Friar Diego Duran 
back in the 15th century was making these connections. Okay. Uh, do, 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 do. So Saint, um, compared to St. Thomas, St. Raymond and Moses, giants, had lived in Mexico. Some of them had attempted to build a Tower of Babel in Cholula, Duran. Uh, there's the reference. A trinity was worshipped. The Asic revert, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost called them Tota, Tolpilzin, and Yolomel. These words mean our Father, our Son our son and the heart of both honoring each one separately and all these all three as a unit the trinity was also revered as totec chippy um and uh tal at la quits it katal totec me totec me awesome and terrible lord look at that totec awesome and terrible lord what do they call yahweh al shaddai the awesome and terrible right who fills one with dread no joke fear yahweh cheap meant men who had been flayed and ill-treated meant mirror of fiery brightness mirror of fiery brightness what do you how is his how his face shone like the sun right he was he was his his head and his hairs were white like brightness loosed Right, one goddess had three names. One was child. I'm not going to try Akium, which means <clears throat> precious stone of of emerald, because she was chosen among all women. A name that doubtly, uh, doubt, name that doubtless reminded Duran uh, of the Virgin Mary. The same goddess was also called Chico Mecatl, our seven snake, because the natives believed that she had prevailed against seven serpents, our sin, that that named undoubtedly called to mind Mary Magdalene, whom Yahweh ejected seven evil spirits. The third name, Chil An -en, meant she who always walked and remained as fresh and tender as a young ear of corn. Check it out. The sacred pole, Kotl, had functioned as the patron and guardian of the Koyoakan. After the conquest, the guardianship of the town was given to St. John the Baptist. Nahu Olin offered motion. The calendarical name for the solar god had been the patron as Aztec warriors, just as St. James was the patron of Spanish warriors. Duran also meditated on the moral code of the native peoples. How had these people received commandments? Also identical to the Mosaic law, right? Let me read that again. Duran also meditated on the moral code of the native peoples. How had these people received commandments almost identical to the Mosaic law? The sermons of the Aztec priests extolled a peaceful life filled with reverence, modesty, good uh, breeding, good breeding. Hear that? Good breeding, obedience, and charity towards the poor and towards strangers. These sermons delivered in elegant language filled the rhetoric filled with rhetoric and metaphor, often referred to the lowly state of man in relation to his creator. In Aztec theology, the wicked were to suffer in the underworld for his sins committed in this life, but pardon for sins could be obtained during the Jubilee held every four years. During all his years of research among the native friends and villages, Duran was tormented by these parallels. He wavered, he velicit vacillated at one moment he was convinced that the preachers of the hebrew religion had been in the new world at the next that christian preacher had visited mexico so there it is man that was a quick little little rundown of uh about only five pages of this book science uh will never tell us these things we had to go back into the history just like job 8 and 8 say inquire i pray thee Right, inquire thy pray thee of the former age and prepare thyself to the search of thy fathers. Topilzin is another name for Quetzalcoatl. Yeah, right. And, and Diego Duran, he made the connection. He said that that was Hamashiach. He goes, either that was Hamashiach or one of the apostles, he said. All right, so that's it. Uh, Kim, I'm gonna end it here. Uh, Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. For let's hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear Yahweh, keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Shalom.